Hey, it's Mo Egger. If you love college basketball as much as I do, then you will love Long Necks. The 4K TV setup is awesome, and by the way, the sound is always on for the big games. And if you tried the wings at Long Necks, you owe it to yourself. Plus, no place in Northern Kentucky has a better beer selection. There's three locations, Wilder, Hebron, and Richwood, each one of them very easy to get to, each one of them with a great outdoor setup for when the weather gets warmer. Long Neck Sports Grill. Stay late. Come often. Interesting Reds development over the last couple of days. Justin Dunn sidelined again. This is a guy who has dealt with shoulder issues going back to when he was with uh, Seattle, went on the injured list in the summer of 2021, and aside from throwing one minor league rehab game, didn't pitch uh, last year, didn't pitch until the middle of June, um, then had to go on the IL because of another shoulder issue. They uh, shut him down with another shoulder issue late in September. He is now not going to pitch for a few months because he continues to deal with a shoulder issue. So at the same time, he's not having surgery. And again, the story we saw this week was um, they've recommended rest, but they have yet to recommend surgery. Let's chat with an expert, Dr. Nick Early from OrthoCincy. I love chatting with the experts at Ortho Cincy. They've got specialists and locations all across the tri state, including walk in orthopedic urgent care weekdays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can learn more at orthocincy.com. That's ortho C I N C Y.com. Dr. Early, I read that Dunn has a subscapularis in his rotator cuff. I hope I pronounced that correctly. What is a subscapularis in his rotator cuff? So the subscapularis is actually one of the muscles and tendons that makes up the rotator cuff. So there's actually four muscles and tendons of the rotator cuff, and the subscapularis is the one that's in the very front of the shoulder. He must have some issues with that specific tendon. So he's being put on the sidelines for a while. Give us an idea of what the Reds are likely to be doing to rehab the injury so he could actually appear on a mound in 2023. Sure. So – in this situation, when you really, you know, you have somebody who's a throwing athlete who has a problem like this, the first thing you got to do is kind of shut them down and get the inflammation out of the muscle and tendon. And so right away, they're going to you know, start working on things to try to try to help with that. Um, then you really start a program kind of working on doing some rotator cuff strengthening and some very kind of um, lower intensity things to work on strengthening and stretching and, and working on range of motion. And then over time, you know, as the inflammation, as long as it's calmed down, you can start to work on some return to throwing. And that's a very progressive, uh, you know, process. It has to start slow and kind of work up. And um, there's a lot of good, you know, programs out there. And when you're rehabbing somebody from a throwing standpoint, you have to kind of take your time. This is an issue that he has been dealing with for a while now, going back to when he was with uh, Seattle as far back as 2021. He keeps having to miss time because of of shoulder issues. There's been inflammation. It's obviously going to be a while before he pitches this year. Why why does he continue to have this issue? Well, you know, there's a number of factors. Um, You know, if you have a little bit of damage or some injury, it can make that area prone to these types of repeated episodes where you can get some inflammation. Um, you know, occasionally things in the shoulder can be related to mechanics, but, you know, that's less likely to cause, you know, when somebody is, you know, putting the demands on their shoulder, like a major league baseball player, the forces that they're generating on their tissues are extreme. And so it doesn't take much sometimes for things to get out of control again. And so, you know, maybe it's a little bit of overwork or maybe it's even uh, just one episode where something happens a little bit funny and you, you kind of tweak things and it kind of sets off this cascade where the inflammation starts up again. Um, you know, like I said, there can be some underlying, you know, partial damage to some of the structures, which can make this more uh, more common to recur as well. So they've put off surgery to this point. When do things get to the point when surgery is the best and one might say only option? So when you're looking at this from a standpoint of, you know, Justin, the player himself, you know, he's going to try to avoid surgery at all, at all costs for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, obviously you don't want to have surgery if you don't have to. Um, but really because it's a really long rehab process from that. And, you know, the recovery from, you know, a surgery, if you're a throwing athlete, um, it's hard to get back to your, your, you know, level of performance. And so you really try to avoid surgery as much as possible. And really that you tip that, 
scale when you get to the point where, you know, okay, now you're just not performing ever. And you start looking at this going like, when are you going to get back, you know, playing? When are you going to get back doing what you can? And if you're just not able to get back to that, then and only then would you probably consider surgery in a situation like this. If, if things get to that point, just describe the procedure for me. So it kind of depends uh, exactly on how much, you know, damage there is. Most of the time, you're going to be doing something like that uh, as an arthroscopic procedure. So you're working with a camera, um, you know, and long kind of skinny instruments to work, you know, minimally invasively in, in, uh, inside the shoulder. In that area of the shoulder, your biceps tendon actually runs right along next to the subscapularis tendon. So sometimes you have to do something with the biceps tendon actually to um, kind of help with some of the symptoms. Sometimes it's just something as simple as just a debridement of the tendon area just to try to help to kind of clean things up and sometimes it's a more a little bit more significant you actually have to repair tendons um so it really just depends on the, the degree and to some extent mris can really help delineate that and show you know how much damage there is but sometimes you get inside the shoulder and you're looking at it and you really don't know how much damage there's going to be until you can really see it and pull around on some of the structures I read a quote from Justin Dunn yesterday where he talked about the the possible surgery options being explained to him, and he said, quote, it scared the heck out of me. Um, is is the procedure really that scary? You know, from uh, from my perspective, it's it's not that scary. It's something that we do all the time. But if you're an athlete who makes a living with your, your shoulder and you're talking about, hey, we're going to, you know, do this, do that, and especially when you start looking at, okay, here's what the recovery looks like and here's what the – um, you know, potential complications are, and here's what the, you know, if you look at the return to, to play, and, and not just return to play, but return to how effective are you going to be after surgery? Because that's the big thing when you're looking at, like, professional athletes, too. It's not just can they get back to play, are they going to get back to play at the same performance level? Um, and that's where I think it could be a little bit scary. Awesome stuff, as always. This is terrific. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Dr. Nick Early from OrthoCincy. Go to OrthoCincy.com. We love chatting with the experts at OrthoCincy. They've got specialists in locations across the tri-state, including walk-in orthopedic urgent care during the week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in both Edgewood and Eastgate. It is easier and most definitely cheaper than going to an ER when you have an urgent orthopedic injury. Go to OrthoCincy.com. That's ortho c i n c y. Com. Hey, it's Mo Egger. Do you love college basketball as much as I do? Then you will love Long Necks. They've got a great TV setup with 4K TVs all over the place, and the sound is always on for the big games. The beer selection is terrific, and if you tried Long Necks Wings, you owe it to yourself. Three locations in Northern Kentucky, each one of them very easy to get to. Wilder, Hebron, and Richwood. And keep in mind, when the weather gets warmer, each Long Necks location has an awesome outdoor setup. Long Neck Sports Grill. Stay late. Come often.